I wanted to bring today's episode to the podcast talking about environmental stressors. And a lot of the times I think we focus on mental emotional health, which is super important. We talk about this a lot with our clients, but the environmental stressors, we may not even think about them. And there's really simple steps that we can do right now to make major impact with our health. So be it air, water, light, sound, EMFs, food. We are digging into these environmental stressors, what you can do right now to reduce your exposure. Excited for you to listen and feel free to leave a review on iTunes. Today is the last day for the Mindfulness Fertility Series registration. Doors close today, January the 27th at midnight Pacific. So this is a six week live online group program. And the program is a must if you have an IUI or an IVF coming up and essential for anyone trying to get pregnant naturally. So join a group of like-minded women who just get it. All you need to do is go to Fab Fertile, F-A-B Fertile, click on shop and mindfulness or click on the link in the show notes to reserve your spot. Space is very limited. Class starts Thursday, January the 30th. Would love to have you join us if it feels right for you. One theme that keeps coming up with the couples in our Fab Fertile Couples Coaching Program is sleep. Whether it's insomnia, having a hard time falling asleep, waking up at night, or feeling tired when we wake up, sleep is critical for fertility and hormones. And that's why I'm so excited to have Blue Blocks as our podcast sponsor. So we're exposed to blue and green light from our phones, our tablets, our computers, indoor lights, and more. And this exposure impacts our melatonin production. Melatonin is essential for both female and male fertility. It helps determine the frequency and duration of our cycle and impacts sperm. So the there's lots of blue light blocking glasses on the market, but the ones from Blue Blocks, they've actually compared other popular brands and blue blocks block 100% of blue and green light while other brands fall short. So I have their sleep glasses. They have red lenses and the ones I have are a little translucent frame and they're so stylish and really cool. And so they eliminate 100% of the blue and green light in the 400 nanometer to 550 nanometer range. So this is the exact range that has been shown in clinical studies to disrupt melatonin and negatively impact your sleep. So all you do is wear your sleep glasses after sunset until it's time for bed and you'll notice improved sleep after just one use. And it's also cool to use when you're flying for managing jet lag. I got to say, I was a little skeptical about the noticing uh, improvement after one use, but literally I I use these glasses and my sleep is actually already pretty good. I use them for one day and I have to say after one day, I had the best sleep of my life. I just felt so rested. So these glasses, they ship free and they're tracked for all orders anywhere in the world. And also they have all their frames come in prescription, non-prescription and reading glasses. Plus you can send in your frames and they'll add the blue light blocking and green light blocking lenses to your frame. So this is an easy hack that you can add to your fertility toolkit. All you do is go to blue blocks, B-L-U, B-L-O-X.com. Use the coupon code GETPREGNANT podcast at checkout and receive a 15% discount. That's blueblocks, B-L-U-B-L-O-X.com and use the coupon code getpregnantpodcast to receive your 15% discount. I didn't need to go to donor eggs. Obviously, Mm -hmm. I don't regret it. I have beautiful children. I could have done things differently, restored. I was still cycling back in in my 20s. I could have looked at my health, the environmental toxins, the stress I was under, Many, many women are being told their eggs are too old. That's often merely an assumption that's not based on actual evidence. The reason being that there is no direct test of egg quality. You can't test egg quality. It's the man who's got a food sensitivity or he has a zinc deficiency. Like there can be a root cause to these symptoms that are, you know, quote unquote, period problems that the doctor will pass you a pill without any question of why. And some part of you knows that if you can reframe your journey from not one of struggle, or if it is struggle, learn how to embrace the struggle. Learn how to embrace it. Most conditions in the child occur during the nine months of development. It's the the genetic switches are turned on or turned off and they're pre-programmed. So you are in such a powerful, amazing position to do amazing things for your kids. You know, why is IVF the first step? Because we believe it should be the last step. Welcome to Get Pregnant Naturally, where functional medicine and natural fertility solutions 
will help you get pregnant and have your baby. Hey everyone, I'm Sarah Clark and my mission is to inspire, motivate, and empower you. Most of all, I want you to wake up. So with functional medicine, we can discover what causes infertility and eventually reverse the condition. Today, I'm welcoming Maggie Berghoff to the podcast and we're digging into the top stressors and why it's more than just mental and emotional health. Maggie Berghoff is a functional medicine nurse practitioner and a health consultant who works with celebrities, entertainers, athletes, and CEOs executives to up-level their physical and mental health. And before we jump into today's show, don't forget to hit the subscribe button on iTunes or wherever you're listening to this to make sure you never miss an episode. Hey, Maggie, excited to have you on the podcast. Hey, I'm so happy to be here. Awesome. If you could share your journey and really how you came to do this work. Sure. So I'm what's called a functional medicine nurse practitioner. Um, I went to Vanderbilt University for my nurse practitioner degree. I was there for undergrad and grad school. And then once I graduated and got into working for the hospital and my own body had this massive crash, I struggled with infertility, autoimmune disease, like massive hormone dysregulation, just all of this craziness that was happening inside of my body. And I was, you know, surrounded by some of the do- best doctors in the world and no one could help me is when I really started to dig into functional medicine, really trying to find the root cause of things that other doctors may say, you know, oh, here's your lab results. Everything looks normal. You're good to go. And then you're as a patient sitting there like, you know, crying because you're not good to go. So that's kind of what led me down to this path is just, you know, really, really listening to the client or the patient or whatever you call your people and figuring out what's going on inside the body because a lot of the things that we deal with right now are not normal. Yeah. They're common, but not normal. I know. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Crazy. Great. And and so we we talk a lot about uh, food sensitivities and gut infections, obviously environmental stressors, which we're going to dig into today, as well as mental and and emotional stressors. Yeah. Let's talk about the different stressors in the body and, and really why this matters for hormones and fertility. Sure. Okay. So if you have a hormonal imbalance, whether that be like a thyroid hormone or a sex hormone, or your doctors have told you you're infertile or, you know, whatever it is, any type of hormone regulation, it really impacts the amount of stress that is on your body. So your body is constantly under stress. And I'm not talking just psychological stress, like, oh, I'm so stressed out at work or whatever. Like, yeah, that definitely harms our body. But I'm even talking about stress from like the air you're breathing and the water you're drinking and how you talk to your spouse and like mental stress, all of these different things that really impact the internal biochemistry of your body that's going to either hurt or help these pathways, these hormonal pathways. Yeah, and a lot of times with specifically with infertility, we really really focusing on the mental emotional stuff and people are doing mindfulness and really digging into emotional blocks and you know and then meanwhile they're they could have a gut infection mm. they could have food sensitivity and then they're exposed to plastics and all sorts of others um environmental stressors so today we're going to dig into the environmental stressor side of things um before we go into that is there anything else you wanted to to comment on no that sounds great yeah it's a, about baby steps in in all areas of stressors environment is one of them Awesome. So let's go into air. So this is one where um, I in, I intuitively just make sure that the windows are open. Now, not obviously all year round, but even when it is really cold out, I'm like, I just sometimes feel like the air, obviously the air quality sometimes inside can be worse than it is outside. Um, and I was just in a new house over the weekend at an Airbnb and I was upstairs in the bedroom and this thing must have been sealed like you wouldn't believe. And first of all, I was sweating like a dog up there. Um, during the night, I'm like, oh my God, I've never been so hot. But I, when I opened the window, it was just, yeah, like some of the toxins and stuff like that. Can you talk about air quality and what what that means for yeah. uh, health and fertility? Oh, absolutely. So I, for example, when I was going through my own fertility journey and, and my own health crash, this is something that I never would have thought of. Like what, mm. the air? I mean, I was living in apartments at the time or then my friend's house or, you know, I was uh, just graduated college. So I was young at the time and it is so important. Yes, opening the windows and circulating out this circulating out the stagnant air from your home and getting in all the fresh new air, like that tells your body essential nutrients that will really tell your body what to do and how to regulate those hormones without the toxicities and bacteria and allergens and all that great stuff. But more importantly, even, well, not more importantly, but also in addition is how you breathe. So there's even, if you've ever heard of like nose breathing versus mouth breathing. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people don't even 
they're not conscious. If you know they are listening to this podcast right now, they just are like, hey, wait, I don't even know. Like, of course I know breathe, but then they start to think about it and they're like, actually, no, not really. So that's one thing that I know I didn't do all the time is really consciously breathing through my nose, which helps us tremendously not only get rid of bacteria, infections, and help circulate healthy air throughout our body, but it also helps to activate if you do it correctly in like a slow pattern, a parasympathetic nervous system. So your parasympathetic nervous system will help to relax your body, to heal your body. Many of us, especially who struggle with infertility, are we're kind of programmed at a constant sympathetic nervous state. So we're always at that fight or flight flight mode. And definitely if you're worrying about, you know, getting pregnant or balancing your hormones or you're gaining a bunch of weight and you don't know why, like you're in the sympathetic, you're nervous, you're nervous. So breathing through your nose consciously will help to activate the parasympathetic, which helps to regulate the body inside. And do you have one that you like, there's the, the Dr. Andrew Weil, I think it's four, seven, eight. Do you have one that you, you like? Ooh, that's a really good one too. I usually do four, 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 four. So I breathe in through four, hold for four, exhale for four, hold for four. And I do that um, probably three to five times. Yeah. Even as, as you were talking there, I was doing it and I could feel just sort of like the whole body just kind of goes. <laughs> oh, a hundred percent, even before you eat. So we talk a little bit about, you know, your gut health being important for hormone regulation. If you do that, just breathe in through four, hold for four, exhale for four, hold for four, about three times before you eat, your body's going to be able to break down and digest and use the nutrients from your food a lot more efficiently than if you don't. It's going to help you to actually create a healthy gut microbiome, which in turn, creates healthy hormones. So it's all these little tiny habits that if you just knew, you could do that thing, you know, for a few minutes a day, that's going to help you for a long, a long way down the road. Mm -hmm. And what about plants for um, uh, helping to purify the air? I know I've got a few, few ones. I, I, I struggle to keep them alive, but I've tried <laughs> desperately. <laughs> I love it. I, I'm right there with you. Just actually this past year, I started getting um, surprising myself with how well I'm taking care of my plants in my home. I think, yes, we, we know that plants help to clean the air, but even more so for me and, and what I encourage clients to do this for is the fact of looking at nature helps to activate that parasympathetic nervous system, decrease the cortisol stress hormones, regulate your body, you know, help to boost your energy. I personally view plants even more than an air cleaner as like a, a mental and mindset booster. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know if I see if I've managed to either overwater it or underwater it, there's a whole other <laughs> what I'm, my, my being yeah, present in my world. And yeah, that's an interesting kind of thing too. And what about, so we've talked here about uh, personal care and cleaning products, but um, as far as we'll go into the perfumes and colognes and body creams, all these different fragrances we're putting on our body, what, how is that impacting our fertility? And then obviously that the, we're inhaling them. Yeah. Well, so there are a lot of endocrine green disruptors in those items, the fragrances, it has chemicals that literally will change your pathways of your body and harm you. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't ever breathe a perfume or fragrance again in your life. What I like clients to do is to consciously choose to breathe unscented air, even things like your lotion instead of, you know, I used to be like a sweet pea person, you know, back in the day when my body was getting sick in college, sweet pea Victoria's Secret was my jam. Okay. <laughs> or love spell, love spell Victoria's Secret. I'm sure some of you guys can relate to that phase. However, you're lathering toxins on your body every single day and it's absolutely unnecessary. So instead swap to an unscented lotion. It's an easy, easy swap. So what I have my clients do is choose what areas of their life they want to make that swap, whether it be they're going to work on the breathing or they're going to get some plants inside or they're going to ditch their toxins. It doesn't have to be everything at once, but getting rid of those scents in your home via candles or wall plugins or uh, even you know body wash or lotion, it's going to go a long way. What I want you guys to think about is if you can make your body's job easier to rebalance those hormones, to get rid of the nagging symptoms that you're experiencing, to eliminate the autoimmune disease. If you can make it easier for your body to do what it's supposed to do, you're winning. And one way to make it easier and to have your body save its energy instead of detoxing from these perfume scents to rebalance your hormones, that in my mind is a pretty simple swap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if it's got fragrance on it, don't use it. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, do you have, um, I'm, I'm using a couple ones that I like Lotus way. She's got some, um, mists that are really nice with essential. They're actually with flower elixirs. Oh. Uh, yeah, they're really cool. And one that I've got on my little Christmas list is, uh, from Goop. She, they have, um, some non-toxic, um, perfumes. And I think they, they also had Michelle Pfeiffer on there. She has, she has a new line of perfumes that are actually endorsed by the, uh, not endorsed because she's on the, she's on the board of the environmental working group. Oh, wow. She, she worked in conjunction with them to develop this perfume for her. So anything that you like for as far as um, a non-toxic fragrance? No, I'm over here writing down your tips. <laughs> I, I usually don't even just do, I just don't do a fragrance um, typically, but I've never heard of those brands. I have an essential oil roll-on stick that I really like. I'm not sure what the brand is. It's just organic, like, uh, I don't know, you know, they have different types like Revitalize or Energy or Calming or whatever. It's one of those organic essential oil blends. Um, but yeah, I've never heard of those ones. So I'm going to check them out. Anything else as far as, oh, yeah, air purifiers. What are you mm. using? And what were you saying? Okay, so I like the Enviro Cleanse, is what it's called. Okay. It's about, uh, I would say it's a two by two box. So it's not anything that's like real small or sleek or chic or anything, but it's just a beige colored box and it has rollers on, her, on it. So you can roll it. It's about 20, 30 pounds. So you can take it up, down, up and down the stairs if you don't want to get multiple units for your house. Mm-hmm. It's phenomenal. I think it covers about 900 square feet per area. So you, if you have a house larger than that, you'll do it in one area, then you'll move it to the other area periodically. It is the only one on the market that I have found that instead of using a carbon filter, which I'm I'm not about carbon filters, it uses a different technology to not only get rid of the allergens and bacteria and dust and all that stuff, but also totally eliminate what's called VOCs and off-gassing materials. So volatile organic compounds and off-gassing, which are chemicals from like furniture and flooring and cupboard and you know even the glues that hold your cabinet you know together. Um, those can be really toxic for our bodies. Now, I don't want you <laughs> to go live in a grass hut somewhere you know, we're going to have those toxins, but if you get the EnviroCleanse unit or something similar to that, then, and I'm not endorsed by EnviroCleanse or anything, but this is just the one I personally use, then, um, I mean, it's, it's an up level. That's for sure. And how much is something like that? Do you know? Mm, I think it's about 600 to $800 for that unit. And then, okay, let's go into water. So I invested in the Berkey water filter, I don't know, but maybe about three or four years ago. And I have to tell you that water out of that Berkey filter, it is like drinking water from the gods. I, I don't know. It's just a mm. different, like for years, years, I drank tap water. And then I went into a Brita water and then I went into the, the, the fridge, um, uh, water, which was, the, it was filtered there from the fridge, but the, the Berkey water filter, which will really figure out, I think it filters out over 99% of, of, uh, chlorine, fluoride, asbestos, whatever the, the, the different contaminants. And it just really, it actually feels very hydrating. Um, what are you seeing with water filters? Which ones do you like? Yeah, hundred percent. I used to use the Brita too. And I thought that I was like healthy, you know, mm. filtering out my water? It, absolutely not. It, 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 you might as well drink tap water, really. Um, you can't trust water from your sinks. I like the a Berkey. It's a good option. I like to also remineralize my water. So a Berkey filter cleans out everything everything. That's amazing. But it doesn't add back in the essential minerals that it stripped out. It's just like when you take an antibiotic, it takes away all the bad, but it also takes away the good. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. So I like the Berkey. And then what I usually have my clients do is add mineral drops in. There's fulvic acid mineral drops. You can find like all this stuff that I use every day on my website store. But there's these fulvic acid mineral drops. You can get them from Amazon. And I like to put them into the water that you're drinking from the Berkey. Can you spell spell the name of that that mineral drop? It's Mm F-U-L-V-I-C acid. Okay. Mineral drops and they're organic mineral drops and you can just buy them on Amazon. They're fantastic and they're flavorless. I personally don't like to mess with adding the drops back in because I just want like one less thing to worry about for the day. So my system that I use actually already has remineralization system on it. Um, and it, there's two options there that I have found. There's one called Home Master, which is one I personally have. And there's one called Aquasana, which is a very similar brand. And they have what's called reverse osmosis, which is like kind of what the Berkey does, but they also remineralize it. So when it comes out of that spout, it's already, it has everything that you need in it. So do you have that? Is that under your kitchen Mm -hmm. tap then? Yeah. Yeah. It's underneath the kitchen counter and then they, you know, drill a little hole next to your normal faucet and then it has the new faucet and then that's the new beautiful, amazing water. 
Beautiful. So that's Home Master Aqua Sauna. Mm -hmm. um, and what about, yeah, this is another one that took me years to do was the shower filter. And mm. you know, you're in the shower on this beautiful hot shower and then you're inhaling all these vapors, which then can impact your thyroid because all the, the, the uh, chlorine in the water. Um, what are you doing with what, shower filters? Yeah, there's two options. Well, one, minimum, you've got to get a shower head filter and they are inexpensive. You can get, get them for like $20. Aqua Sauna, the, that other brand, they have shower filters. You can get some great ones on Amazon. You just got to screw it up there and, and have a shower filter. Another option that you can do is get a whole house filter system. Yeah. So they actually sell filter systems that'll do reverse osmosis water through your entire home. So it's like having Berkey, but come out of every single, you know, shower head and sink and bathtub and everything. Um, so those are the two options there. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's the dream. But that, those kind of, for the whole house, uh, reverse osmosis, you know how much that those run? They're pricey. It's a couple thousand dollars. Um, but you know, in the great scheme of things, no, it's not, it's not too bad. And it's for forever, you know? Mm. Um, but the, other alternative, right? I like to do easy steps because this could be an easy swap. Literally, you can be like, okay, I'm going to put this on my to-do list and I'm going to pick it up on the way home from work, get a shower filter. So easy. Yeah. Just screw yeah. it on there. Yeah. Anything else you wanted to share about water? Mm -hmm. I think those are good. some good tips that you covered. And the next one we have is light. Now, I just got my first um, blue light blockers and I got them from uh, Blue Blocks. So B-L-U-B-L-O-X. And I got to freaking tell you, I don't know, man, like, cause I'm talking to all my clients, where are the blue light blockers to really help with melatonin and help them mm. sleep. And I hadn't got them yet. And I, I just got them a week or so ago. So I'll wear them because I have a, a book that I read. That's my, my tablet. And if I watch any kind of shows or if I'm on my computer, so I'll wear them about two to three hours before bed. And I'm like dreaming again. I didn't know that I wasn't dreaming for a while. Now I'm like, damn, I'm dreaming again. So yeah, what are you seeing with the uh, blue light blockers or, or, or with light in general? Yeah, that's that's amazing. I'm so happy for you because sleep is so important. Um, the blue light blockers are a fantastic way to make sure that in the evening time when the sun has set, your body is not exposed to what's called blue light. It's those bright lights that we have every single day that we're underneath, right? So the problem is, is that once that sun sets, we need to keep like that amber toned for our body to recognize it as evening and to increase melatonin, which is your sleep hormone. So we're talking hormones today. Melatonin is one of them. Okay. So you could have, um, imbalances in that hormone and it can be really, really damaging to your sleep cycles, which can be damaging to your sex hormones and so forth. So putting on those red glasses at night after the sun sets is one easy way to make sure that you're blocking yourself from the blue light. Mm -hmm. um, also, I will use blue light blocking glasses like in an airport. If I'm traveling, especially in the evening or across time zones, I stick those babies on. Um, and then also with light, the big thing with light is that we want to make sure that we are thinking about our circadian rhythm, which is the biological clock of our body. And that's why we wear those blue light blocking glasses so that we can make sure our circadian rhythm stays on point. You know, when the sun sets, we're supposed to keep it amber and dark, but we go inside and flip up, flip up all of our brightest lights, right? Mm. It's not natural. Or we're sitting in front of a computer or a laptop or a TV or a tablet until 11 p.m. right before we go to bed. That's not what's supposed to happen. So we're trying to make sure that with the blue light blocking glasses that we are keeping our circadian rhythm on point while living in a modern world. Yeah, because a lot of times we're getting that we people can fall asleep on the couch at like 8 or 8.30 and then next thing you know, they wake up and then get that second wind around 11 if you watch the watch get, getting exposed to the blue light and then can't go to bed till 1 and then it's a suspicious circle of never getting enough sleep and being, being exhausted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the best thing you could do for sleep, um, like if you're falling asleep and waking up and all that kind of stuff is go to bed and wake up at the exact same time every single day, even weekends. That If you do that, that's one step in the right direction to start to balance your hormones, to start to feel amazing, to rebalance your circadian rhythm, to your met metabolism boosting and all of that good stuff. So just simply, you're going to have to, just like you would tell a little kid, it's time for bed. You're going to have to tell yourself, okay, this is my bedtime and start getting used to it and your body will start to regulate. Yeah, yeah, to actually pri prioritize that time. I know that mm -hmm. comes from uh, Ariana Huffington, who's the founder of the Huffington Post, and she had that, that wake up call where she actually f collapsed on her desk and broke her cheekbone, and then wrote the book on um, wrote some, a couple of books on sleep. I think talking about she's like, you know what, I have a bedtime now of ten thirty. I take all the phones out of the bed bedroom. So if she can do it, who's now moved on from Huffington Post, to, she's got Thrive Thrive Global. But if she can do it, the rest of us can. A hundred percent. Yeah. There's no reason you can't you, like whenever somebody says that, you know, they can't go to bed on time or it's because they, they have kids or they're cleaning or they have work or whatever. 
Those are excuses. There are people, like you said, who are very busy individuals Mm -hmm. and very successful individuals who are making a priority to go to bed at 10.30 or earlier. I know a lot of my friends go to bed at 9.30 every single night, no matter what. Jessica joined our Mindfulness Fertility Series after struggling with infertility for more than 12 years. She had endured Clomid, gonal F-stimulating drugs, and two failed frozen embryo transfers with donated embryos. She was depressed, felt extremely alone, and once again felt like a failure. And she couldn't even share with people how she actually felt. I'm happy to report that Jessica welcomed her son. Her transfer worked while she was still in the Mindfulness Fertility Series. This Mindfulness Fertility Series is run twice a year. Next class starts January the 30th. All you need to do to register is go to Fab Fertile, FAB Fertile, click on shop and the Mindfulness Fertility Series link and would love to have you join us. And so um, as far as light, then any other exposures, obviously like in the bedroom, you want to make sure that you're you're keeping it very dark in there. I've just in the last year used to start using a sleep mask and I just can't believe it's taken me how my whole life to discover the power of the sleep mask. But uh, to keep those lights out, even though I had the blackout curtains and there was just, there was still kind of little pokes of light coming through, but anything else about light that you wanted to say was maybe sleep or anything else? Yeah. I mean, definitely just making sure that the bedroom's optimized for sleeping. So that's getting the light out. That is making sure your cell phone is not near your bed. It's on airplane mode. It's not, you know, it's not on if you want, if you don't want it to be on or it's out of the room, ideally. Um, just making sure that your bedtime is for bedtime and that you're not exposing yourself to these unnecessary toxicities that are hurting your body that you don't need to deal with. What about sound? So I find the older I get that I find like if there's too much talking and like wild, like I do like some good music, but if it's like everyone's talking, there's all this music, I just find it it is a little more disconcerting than it used to be to me. So for sound, I like to, especially for bedtime kind of thing, like easing in with nice, you know, lower music and um, things that kind of keep me calm. But what are you seeing around the sound? Um environmental toxin. Yeah. My favorite thing to do with sound is to have none of it during sometimes the day. So I like when clients, even if they live in busy New York city, they're really being cognizant that sometime during the day, they're having at least 10 minutes of quiet time. Like I'm talking no music, like just straight quiet because the brain needs a chance to just be and to just be still and to to just, you know, whether you want to meditate during that time or you can listen to some some like binaural beats if you want to, but ideally, I just want you to be in some silence so that your brain can stop interpreting all this stuff that's going on and have a moment to just regenerate, recoup, and heal. Yeah, because a lot of times we're keeping music on or TVs on or something's always on. I I, I personally like I like the silence. And what about earplugs? I guess we can just plug it all up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, that's a good thought. I have not personally ever used earplugs, but yeah, you could totally just stick some earplugs in, especially if you um, have some outside noise. Maybe you're in the office and you still hear people around you, but you want to take some moments to yourself in the afternoon. Yeah, and I guess those noise canceling headphones too. I don't have my, my kids have those, but I don't have mm. them. Yeah, I ha- we have the Bose noise canceling. That's helpful for that. Yeah, those drive me crazy that when I'm like, okay, I'm over here and no one's listening. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anything else for, for sound as a stressor? I mean, maybe it's to like me. So I sometimes see if there is too much noise going on that I do need to take a break. Is it maybe to be aware of that? or? Yeah, I say just put it in as your healthy habit. Like mm. every day you have some moments to yourself. I think that's so important. No matter how busy you are, you have some time to yourself and anybody can make that a priority. The next thing we have is the electromagnetic frequencies. So with Wi-Fi and now 5G coming into play, um, what are you seeing there? It's especially important for, for male fertility and for, and for female as well, but especially for, for male. Mm-hmm. What are you seeing for EMFs? Yeah. I mean, obviously we know that there are, they are damaging to our health. We don't know a lot yet, but we know enough. Okay. So the best tips that I would give to people who they're like, okay, well, I'm not going to give up my Wi-Fi. I'm not going to give up whatever the Bluetooth or whatever. Again, optimize where you can. So here are the strategies that I usually tell people to just be cognizant of. One, don't have your cell phone on your body. Get it out of your pocket. Get it out of your purse. Unless it's on airplane mode and you're sure it's on airplane mode, it should not be 
near your body at all. And that also, like we said, applies to your bed. So don't have that phone on your bedstand. I know I like, I didn't know better beforehand. I used to literally sleep with my phone, like next to me on the bed. It would just be like right by my head. Mm -hmm. Horrible. It's so bad for you. Uh, But I didn't know. But now that I know, make sure that thing is turned off on airplane mode out of the bedroom or at least, you know, in the bathroom or on your dresser or something away from your bed. Um, Another thing that we can do is distance ourselves from it. So if we're say on our laptop all the time, ironically, I don't want it to be on your lap. I want you to make sure that it is far away from your body um, and that you distance yourself from that thing. Now, gold standard, you can actually wire that laptop You can, or you can get a desktop that is wired um, so that you're not using the Wi-Fi, which will decrease the EMF exposure that you have from that device. So that's something that you can think about. And then just getting rid of unnecessary things in your environment. So if you have an Alexa or Google Play or all of those devices, those all are basically EMF bombs, right? So they have a really high amount of EMF in them. And if you don't need it, get rid of it. You know, go plug in your phone to play some music that you've downloaded because then you're keeping yourself safe. It's one step above um, where you can make sure that your body, instead of being hurt by these electromagnetic frequencies, it can start to heal those hormones again. Yeah. And I think there's, they have, I was listening to a podcast a couple weeks ago talking about uh, EMF because I was like, how do I turn off my Wi-Fi at night? And literally my my phone or my internet provider was like this long, each day I'd need to put in this code and this, this crazy thing that I need, and I need to change the code each day. Um, there's a system that's like an EMF killer and you basically have it hooked up. I can probably find it again. It will then disable your Wi-Fi during the night. Or you can just unplug it, your router. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you can do that. <laughs> so either either this, you just go unplug your router every night or what a lot of my clients do, because we don't even want to have to remember to unplug and plug it back in, mm-hmm. is uh, we'll get like one of those plugs. You know, they have it for Christmas lights where it's automatic. You just turn it on and off. So oh, it's plugged time. into that thing and you can turn it on and off. And then you can even time it. So every single night at 8 p.m. it goes off and every morning at 5 a.m. it goes on or whatever time you want it to be. Usually one or two hours before bedtime is when I want it to be turned off. That's the easy way to do that. That's easy. I was trying to think of an easy solution. I'm like, why can't I figure that? Yeah, that is like... Unplug it. Pull that plug. Pull the plug. Um, Okay, so we've got air, water, light, sound, EMFs, anything else um, that we're missing there on the environmental stressors? Oh, actually, uh, food. We're... Food, where you know we get in the middle of a huge food experiment with um, our food being sprayed with uh, glyphosate, and, um, which is a herbicide linked to infertility and other diseases. So, to me, making sure you always um, select organic. Anything else you wanted to say about food? Yeah, yeah, organic. Um, it, it just again one raise your standard moment where you can choose to decrease toxins. That organic still has toxins in it, mm-hmm. but they are less harmful. We know there are not as many. And so it's a better option, okay? And then also just eating real food. So instead of eating packaged food, even if it's organic, packaged food is always going to be more harmful than real food. So instead of having, you know, packaged, oh gosh, brown rice puffs or whatever, have some brown rice. Instead of having packaged apple strip, fruit strips, have an apple. It's much more healthy for our body um, to actually have that whole food that is, you know, how it is when it's made in nature than to consume packaged food, even if it says organic, natural, non-GMO, vegan, keto, <laughs> whatever it is, it doesn't mean it's healthy. Exactly. You can go down when it's got all these health claims on it. Obviously, if you've got the the um, Project Verified, verified non-GMO. So, yeah, yeah, non-GMO. And then, yeah, so the, you, you want to look for those. But if, yeah, if it's got all these packaging and all that in there, it's, as you say, go, go back to basics and sort of like, what's naturally gluten-free? What's naturally... Um, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> a gluten-free donut does not mean it's healthy for you. <laughs> it's going to hurt you. So, the, and keep it simple. I'm all about simplicity. So I... I prefer my clients just to eat consistently simple, real food. That's it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Some gut infections. How would that then come into play for like, we're seeing this a lot with our clients um, and our couples coaching program. We, we do, we run a GI map test and find um, the majority of people have either a parasite, a bacterial infection, a fungal infection. So there's something going on in the gut. 
Um, and, and as we start to heal these, then we, we can see actually see people's cycle and, and their whole entire health improve. What are you seeing with, with gut infections? And, yeah, I see, I do see a lot of gut dysbiosis and microbiome complications, um, in my clients, especially with hormone imbalances or really any kind of nagging symptom that's going on. We usually can, can find some things going on in the gut. So it doesn't mean that it's the only thing that matters. I don't believe that gut health is the only thing that matters. I believe that it's it's a whole variety of things. However, it's it's very, very important. So we're addressing gut health right away with my clients. Um, we are making sure that if we do have bacterial imbalances or we have a parasite or some nasty bacteria that's overgrown and causing harm in our gut lining and inflammation, we can test the inflammatory markers. We're addressing that. And also what we do for our clients that I find really helpful for the gut microbiome and also general inflammation in the body is we test for food intolerance. Mm -hmm. So we literally test their blood to see exactly what foods are causing inflammation in their body, in their gut lining, and wreaking havoc on their internal biochemistry and which foods are nourishing them. And so then you know black and white what to do for your body to make sure that you are rebalancing these hormones. You do get your results that you're looking for and that it's a long-term solution. And what food sensitivity, what, what labs are you using for that one? I use a lab. It's called ELISA, A-C-T backslash L-R-A, lymphocyte response to say. Okay. It's fantastic. It's, it's definitely um, one of the bigger investments for functional medicine lab tests. As you know, functional medicine testing can be quite expensive. This one is the... Um, the top, but it's absolutely worth it. And the results you use for the next six months and my clients just rave. Like this is the one test that actually my clients will be texting me immediately afterward, like within one week of implementing, raving about the improvement that they've seen in their symptoms. Yeah. It's shocking. Most people that come to us, I don't have food sensitivities. And we do the food sensitivity testing and the elimination diet. It's like, oh wait, turns out I do. Um, mm -hmm. Which is, you know, and it's not forever though, you guys, you start to heal the body and it's not just like keeping yeah. this like strict elimination diet your whole life because that's that's not conducive to to, to to real life to begin with. <laughs> totally. Yeah, six months. We take mm -hmm. all the foods out for six months. We rebalance that body fully in that time and then you're good to go. And then the uh, mental, emotional stress, what are you seeing there? I think that we talked a little bit about the sympathetic nervous system and how a lot of people are in this fight or flight like tension most all the time that really prioritize reprioritizing your life is going to be important with if you really are trying to rebalance your body, your hormones, your fertility and whatever it is, you need to have a shift. What you've been doing so far has placed you and landed you to where you are in your health right now. So we need to be doing something different than we did before. And it may be readjusting our lifestyle, our goals. I know, for example, for me, um, I was a very, very type A personality, always in sympathetic drive. I was a go, 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 go type of person. Now that's my default. Sometimes I still find myself and I'm like, hang on, Meg. we got, we got to, you know, wind down for a second. Uh, but you can do it strategically. So I know now that, for example, if I I run multiple companies, so if if I have a very busy weekend, I'm traveling, I'm speaking, and you know I'm doing all this stuff. Obviously, I know that my body is going to be a little worn down, even if I allow myself time during that travel week or weekend to relax, which I do to you know get a massage or sleep in or whatever it is. I know that when I get home, I need to really prioritize self-care, relaxation, and really getting my body back into balance. So what that looks like for me is forcing myself to get to the gym at 5 a.m. every day and pushing myself in the gym. It's not staying up until midnight working because I want to get some more stuff done before the next day. It's knowing that that stuff that I think needs to be done at that time and I think is urgent is actually not urgent. It is not life or death and it's going to be there right when you wake up in the morning. It's also knowing that when I wake up in the morning, I'm prioritizing my health first and foremost, even before anything regarding my clients. I don't open emails. I'm not addressing text messages. I'm not doing anything for anybody else until I'm fully taken care of in the morning. And that helps me to balance the, the natural type A sympathetic type of personality that I am um, so that I don't land myself with autoimmune disease or infertility or anything of that matter again. Yeah, I agree. It's like those those boundaries. Because otherwise you go down the rabbit hole and, and that then the, the person that's helping becomes sick and needs help themselves. Like the burnt, yeah, the burnt out healer. Mm, yeah, totally. Your clients, I always like to say that your your clients, so like my clients, will only get as good results as I personally implement in my life. 
I truly believe that mm-hmm. I have to be walking the walk, talking the yeah. talk for my clients to be able to fully get well themselves. So it's a top priority for me. A lot of times when I'm coaching someone, I'm like, oh, Sarah, that's what you need to hear. Yeah. <laughs> talking about boundaries or I'm talking about what, whatever I'm talking about. I'm like, oh yeah, back to me. And then, you know, dig in. And we all have those patterns where times of stress, you know, we'll let go of some of those self-care and then to be able to, first of all, is to be able to be aware of it. You're even doing it. Cause sometimes we've gone for years. We didn't even know that we weren't sleeping properly or uh-huh. we were saying yes to everything because we were excited and yeah. That's where I really value mentorships mm-hmm. or, or at least like a, you know, accountability buddy or something in business or in life at all. Um, I always will have a mentor. I'll yes. always have a doctor. I will always has, have a business mentor and it changes, you know, as I grow and change, you'll grow out of your mentors, you'll grow, grow out of your circles, but I always will keep somebody basically in my corner to make sure that I'm doing what I need to do. I'm not burning myself out. I'm, I'm growing, I'm excelling. Um, and so I think that that's really important for everybody. I agree. Absolutely agree. And so what are you obsessed with right now? Be it a book, a website, an app, a documentary, anything you're just loving? Oh, oh my gosh. Well, uh, right now I'm uh, like literally obsessed with our current clients and we're enrolling for our next round of a business mastermind. So um, we have a mastermind where we teach clinicians and coaches to build virtual health consulting practices. Cool. And I would literally say that that's my biggest obsession right now because I'm just even smiling right now talk, thinking about it because all the calls with the most amazing humans in the world that I've been in contact with the last few days and rolling into our next session. And it, that's honestly what I'm super obsessed with right now. Awesome. I love it. And a success story, anything you'd like to share with us? Um, what would best serve your audience. Okay. So is this a lot of fertility people listen to this? Yes. Okay. So, um, I'll do a fertility success story of one of my clients. So, um, they came to me infertile, couldn't have children. They did IVF. It failed. It failed. They were frustrated. Um, and so the, the wife came to me and we did some lab testing on her because again, you can't just one size fits all this stuff. If you really want to know what's going on in your body, you got to do the testing. So we did the testing. We found out, yes, she had, um, microbiome complications. So her gut lining wasn't great. She had a ton of inflammation, like a ton of inflammation mm-hmm. in her body. Her IgA level, which is an inflammatory marker, was just off the charts highest I've ever seen. Um, she was not living a healthy, relaxed, amazing life of bliss and, and happiness and joy. She was stressed and she was um, she was not to the level of you know living a natural life at all. And so basically... Literally within a few months, we rebalanced her body. We got all the inflammation out. We addressed her concerns, her mental, her mentality. She got pregnant with twins naturally. Mm-hmm. So like, that's a super cool success mm-hmm. story that I like to share. And that's not the first one. I have many, many people come to me for fertility mm-hmm. and it's absolutely possible no matter how many years you've been trying that it can happen for you too. Absolutely. Love it. And you have got a free gift here for our listeners. And it is to figure out your inflammation type. So you go to maggiebergoff.com forward slash inflammation type. And I'll have that in the show notes. And what can they expect there? Okay. So we have a quiz for people. And this quiz is going to ask you very direct questions in categories we kind of talked about a little bit today. It's going to ask you about your gut health. It's going to ask you about your daily routines and your mindset and your your fulfillment out of life, like all these questions. And based on those questions, it's going to give you the category of inflammation um, through this algorithm that you are. Now, when you find your category of inflammation, you're going to get an email sent to you with a chart that shows if you are in this certain bracket of inflammation, here's what to do. So with that chart, you'll have your results. Say you're, you know, you score a 10 for your inflammatory type. You'll look at the results in the chart. You'll see what's going on. It's going to give you some concrete um, steps to take next for your specific type. Awesome. Great. Well, thanks so much for coming on, sharing your words of wisdom on this topic. And yeah, this is stuff we can go on for, for a while, but I think it's like, as you say, keeping it simple and really just making those small steps to those different categories we talked about with air, water, light, sound, uh, EMFs, foods, and obviously we can go and gut infections and food sensitivities, but the environmental toxins are, are key and you can make those little changes every day. So thanks so much for coming on and, and, sh- and sharing about that. 100%. You're so welcome. It was an honor to be here. If you are over-researching, obsessed with Dr. Google, or find yourself up at 3 a.m. worrying about the future, you'll begin to realize the absolute power of the mind-body connection as you let go of control and lean into the flow. Class starts Thursday, January the 30th for our Mindfulness Fertility Series. Space is very limited. Registration closes today, January 27th. 
at midnight Pacific. All you do is go to Fab Fertile, F-A-B Fertile, click on shop and mindfulness fertility series to register. That's Fab Fertile, F-A-B Fertile and shop mindfulness fertility series to register. Melatonin is important for female fertility. It helps regulate hormones and maintain the body's circadian rhythms. Plus it helps determine the frequency and duration of the menstrual cycle. Plus it impacts sperm count and motility. Blue and green light negatively impact our melatonin production. That's why we recommend blue blocks, blue and green light sleep glasses to all our one-to-one -one clients. Simply go to blue blocks, B-L-U, B-L-O-X.com and use the coupon code get pregnant podcast at checkout to receive your 15% discount. That's blue blocks, B-L-U, B-L-O-X.com and use the coupon code get pregnant podcast. The Get Pregnant Naturally podcast, including show notes and links, provides information with respect to healthy living, nutrition, lab testing, and is intended for informational purposes only. The information provided is not a substitute for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, nor is it to be construed as such. We cannot guarantee that the information provided on the Get Pregnant Naturally podcast reflects the most up-to-date medical research. Information is provided without representation or warranties of any kind. Please consult a qualified physician for medical advice and always seek the advice of a qualified health care provider with any questions you may have regarding your health and nutrition program.